Now at 10, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Well, parents in Bethany are expressing frustration yet again with town leaders after they say a parks and rec program was cut without notice. Thanks for joining us for the Fox 61 News at 10. I'm Brent Harden. And I'm Sarah Sanchez. Over the summer, the town was rocked by allegations of sexual abuse against a former Parks and Rec employee. Fox 61's Kaylee Collins has been following the story and joins us live in Bethany now. So, Kaylee, uh, what can you tell us about this uh, recent program cancellation? Well, Brent, Sarah, parents tell me they just found out on Friday that this Parks and Rec program would be no longer operating as of today. And it's a program that they rely on for before and after school child care and transportation. We heard how this last minute change is impacting one family with two young children. Parents in Bethany are disappointed. Time and time again, the town just kind of lets us down. And desperate for support after they found out Friday the rec room program put on by the Parks and Rec Department had been cut without any prior communication from the town. We all kind of found out about this on Facebook. Mary York has two sons who've been a part of the program for years. She heard rumors online that due to the interim director's resignation, the town had decided to cut the program. It was only after repeated emails to members of the select board that she got confirmation she'd have to find alternative child care in just two days. But I think what really hurts is that there was no planning. There was barely any communication and, you know, for a town that's built on family values, um, it seems like the families are coming last. Nicholas Batone confirmed to Fox 61 that he offered his letter of resignation on September 6th, though he did not wish to speak on camera. A request for a copy of that letter was not immediately answered. Batone had been serving as interim parks and rec director since the previous director resigned last month due to her alleged mishandling of sexual assault allegations against one of her former employees. While York and about 40 other families scramble to make new accommodations, she says she's disheartened by a seemingly ongoing lack of communication from the town. It's been painful enough that people have to talk to their kids about sexual abuse and uncomfortable topics. And now we have to have this last minute conversation with our kids about why their whole routine is gone and why they're not going to see their counselors again. So I just wish I could stop having uncomfortable conversations with my kids on the town's behalf. Now we have reached out to first select woman Paula Cofrancesco for comment about this parks and rec program cancellation. We're waiting to hear back from her. We do know that a special board of selectmen meeting is going to be held here tomorrow at 6 p.m. right here at the Bethany Town Hall. Live in Bethany tonight, Kaylee Collins, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Kaylee, thank you. Time now for first check of the forecast and the beginning of a beautiful week of weather. Yeah, it's kind of really nice <laughs> to have those windows open. <laughs> Brent, I think you just read right behind Rachel. <laughs> beautiful week ahead. There's really not a lot to talk about, right, Rachel? <laughs> no, we've got lots of sunshine, low humidity in place. We're basically picking up where last week left off. The only chance of rain that we have in the forecast will actually be while we sleep tonight, and it's not going to be much. You'll see this band of showers has really lost a lot of its gusto as it's been approaching us and I think that'll continue as it moves into Connecticut. So a stray shower but with this dry stretch of weather that we have ahead we're still going to need to water the lawn and garden which is not something that I've said all that much here this summer after it being so wet. But here's a look at the future radar again. Notice it approaches most of it falls apart and by the time you wake up tomorrow morning the sun's already out. Overnight lows will be in the 50s as we head towards daybreak, although closer to 60 for the New Haven area heading into the day tomorrow after a comfortably cool start. It's a pleasant finish. We're looking at high temperatures in the middle to upper 70s and we'll see similar numbers as we head through your Wednesday, but Thursday and beyond those temperatures are warming up and summer is making a comeback. We'll explain your full forecast coming up. All right, Rachel, thank you. We are learning more tonight about a plane crash that claimed the lives of four people from Connecticut one of them a 15 year old girl. The group took off from Wyndham Airport yesterday landing at Basin Harbor Airport in Ferrisburg. They were prepared to fly back home by noon, but they never made it back. Fox 61's Matt Karen has the very latest. 
Well, at least three of the four victims are connected to the Middletown school community, where today they brought in extra counselors and even therapy animals to help people cope with this tremendous loss. For 55-year-old Paul Pelletier, an aerospace teacher at Middletown Schools. It's my pleasure to help the first responders make their job safer. Aviation and education were one and the same. Oh, this one hits home. It's really sad. So when the ill-fated flight Paul piloted crashed Sunday in a wooded area of Vermont, those he taught... I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Paul. ...knew they'd lost a friend. He cared about people. He cared about his students. One of those students, 15-year-old Delilah Van Ness, a sophomore at Middletown High School. She died with him, along with her mother, 55-year-old Susan. Middletown schools with a statement in part, this unimaginable loss has left a void in our hearts and our community. It's always sad when, when this sort of thing happens and it happens too much with these small planes. Paul and Delilah were familiar faces to Fox 61. We spotlighted a segment about Paul's drone and flight class at Middletown High School, bringing public safety to new heights in June. It's win-win. When you can get the kids and the first responders and everybody's learning, um, that's, I think that's what education is supposed to be all about. I do the classroom part, so I'm more of the information side. And then we grade them so they know how they're doing and what they need to work on. You see, Paul ran a unique program where his students became the teachers helping to certify Middletown first responders to fly drones. We've worked with Paul for over two years now. He helped pretty much develop, it, develop and get our drone program off the ground. Little is known about what caused Paul's single engine Piper to plummet from the sky. The NTSB and FAA are investigating, but we know they took off from Wyndham Airport Sunday morning and landed safely at Basin Harbor Airport in Vermont. They had lunch, but on their way back to Wyndham, Shortly after takeoff, something went wrong. The wreckage found just a half a mile from the airport. He was a great man. He had a great passion. He had a great drive. And he really gave that message to all his students. Also killed in the crash was 88-year-old Francisco Rodriguez of Lebanon. Middletown High School will be closed tomorrow. The Vermont State Police told us that that plane never indicated there was any problem, never sent out a radio mayday. It's also worth noting that as passionate as Paul was about drones, it was ultimately a drone that discovered his plane's wreckage. Reporting in Middletown, Matt Karen, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. And we now know the name of the 14-year-old student killed in a dirt bike crash. Police say Carter Jones, a ninth grader at Suffield High School, was riding a dirt bike when he crashed into a sedan. It happened at the intersection of Copper Hill and Woods Hollow Roads. It's unclear of the, if the driver of the sedan was injured. Police are still investigating what exactly caused that crash. Counseling services are available at Suffield Schools for any student in need of support. Suffield Superintendent of Schools released a statement to Today, saying in part, quote, the death of a student is one of the saddest things a school community can face. There is no right or wrong way to grieve, and grief has no timeline. Suffield is a strong and caring community. Thank you for looking out for one another in this difficult time. End quote. Developing in New Haven, police are investigating a double shooting. Two men have been sent to the hospital. The men are reportedly in serious condition. Tonight we learn from police one of the victims is a 21-year-old man, but we don't know the age of the other. Police say they were called to the intersection of State Street and Ferry Street around 1 this afternoon. Police <coughs> believe a car drove by with someone firing at the two men. They're still searching for the driver right now. Detectives are doing what they do best. They're out canvassing, uh, you know, talking to witnesses and pulling video. Uh, we have uh, a vehicle description, so we're following up on that, obviously. And, uh, you know, we want to do the best we can ID who did it. We have some calls into police, and we'll give you an update as soon as it becomes available.